Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about seven interesting card prices that you may not have known has gone up or has continued to go up. So this weekend has been interesting. I have been extremely busy, so it is 3 a.m. and I just completed my work. I have some Memorial Day sales. I own a marketing agency and none of my employees want to work. So I'm left with doing all the work, the graphic design, the content, all the fun stuff. The banner display ads, stuff that takes me a little longer to do now that I don't work on graphic design as much. But overall, pretty cool weekend. I do have Monday off, which is nice. Well, I guess I have half of Monday off. So I probably will go to the beach if it's not raining or some type of really cool parade, Memorial Day, of course. Anyway, let's talk about this card very quickly. It has started to tick up, not as high as it used to be, but most cards are not. The Devoted Droid, let's talk about this card again. I cannot talk enough about it because I just found two foils. And the foil copies are $50 a piece. If you played during Shadowmoor, which I did, and you just have random cards, you will find this card. This is a common, and until recently, it was just considered a okay card, and people are not going to, did not previously pull it out of bulk. I imagine that there are card stores all around the US that have this in bulk. It's very hard to identify its current price. If you were to tell someone this is a $14 common, not likely that they would believe you unless they actually saw a video or knew the information. If you told someone this is a $50 foil, no one would believe you, but it is. It's also quite easy to trade. I'm trading them um, around $8, which is you know, way under market price, I assume, but people really want them and I have lots of copies. So if you are lucky enough like me to play during Shadowmoor, you will have multiple copies of this card because everyone had the same combo deck. Like literally, I remember playing with my friends in the set and everyone had the same deck. It went infinite creature, the uh, quill spike card in the next set over. So it was amazing and everyone loved the deck. So everyone has this card. So next, I do want to emphasize on the uptick of old cards. This is a one mana common 1-1 one, one first striker. In no way is this card good. In no way is this card level pushed. It's literally a 1-1 one, one with first strike for one. But it is $2.50. The one thing I would say is I have been very critical against the current standard cards because I, I feel like they are very weak and they eventually will not be worth any money. And I've been very critical about the recent boxes, including RTR, Origins. I've been highly critical of Origins and people were saying buy Magic Origins as a speculation. I, I just don't see it and the price point will support what I believe, which is you see fat packs at $23 and you see boxes at $80, $82. Magic Origins. Arabian Nights is a set that has just, I don't know, like it's every crappy card in Arabian Nights is going up just across the field. I could not predict that every, that this card would go up, but it has gone up 50 cents since that time. So if you did, if you had to make a speculation, if someone pointed a gun at you and said, hey, buy some Magic cards. If someone's not pointing a gun at you, do not buy magic cards as an investment because although many people will say, oh, they made a lot of money, that they've made $20,000 a year, $40,000 a year, $50,000 a year, they have a lot of capital invested. This is not a McDonald's job where McDonald's pays you for training and teaches you what to do and you get a consistent paycheck every week or every other week. This is a job where you sit on cards and hope they go up in price and you sit on a lot of capital. And the assets are not as liquid sometimes as you would want it to be. Okay, so let's talk about uncommons. So 
Uncommons are interesting, especially for Modern Masters 2015 and Modern Masters 1, because there has been a tick in their price. So although Modern Masters 2017 has pretty much leveled all the pricey modern cards, uh, rares and mythics, they have left the uncommons from these older sets relatively untouched. Right? There was not another reprint of this card, therefore it's heading up. There was not another reprint of Adrazi Temple, therefore it is heading up. And when you talk about cards that have utility, the cards... You know I love artifacts, right? I love artifacts because you can play them in every ED8 stack. You can play them in every single modern deck that would want to play it. So that's the... The most recent example I have of this is the Hanger Backwalker. Hanger Backwalker was played in every single deck, even though sometimes it didn't make any sense. Because there was an artifact. And every deck could play it. And it was the a good, strong card. A strong enough card to make the top 40, uh, top 60 cards of any deck. Top 40 if you consider lands being at least 20. And that is why. Now, one card that I like a ton is Gisela. I like her original Avacyn Restored. Very few times I will say I like the original one over the Commander deck one. The Commander deck one is cheaper, but the original one will always be the original one, especially in foil. Her foil is $38. Her regular is $5.68. You can probably get her on eBay for less than four. And it is one of those cards that if I had to take a guess at what one of the EDH tribal decks would be, it has to be angels, right? They have dragons, then they must have angels. Maybe they have demons. Angels versus demons was the last iteration and dragons versus knights, but I assume that there's not enough really good knights to make a whole ED8 stack with. So we have dragons, and there's really not enough good demons to make an ED8 stack with. So maybe we get angels. Angels would be a very popular type of creature, and it would promote them, and it would encourage people to buy the set, which is the end all goal. The end goal is to sell cards to casual players. That is how Wizards of the Coast makes most of its money. It does not make a lot of money from GP events. It does not make a lot of money from the Pro Tour event. They just have these events to sell more cards. Now, I do want to kind of emphasize a discussion I had and clarify something. If you know, if you're a random dude and somehow you know that the five-color dragon deck is coming, one of your first cards you can pick is what dragons are on the reserve list. This is really not a dragon, but I mean, it's close enough, right? And you would buy those. You would be like, hmm, okay, this dragon's on a reserve list, buy. Okay, this one, okay, buy. It's very obvious. And then the next step would be, you would go on a website like MTG Goldfish and check up a dragon ED8 deck list and see what people are playing in every single dragon deck. Then you would go ahead and buy it and then you would be all good. And you would have enough time if you didn't want attention to keep continue buying this card. This was a, as you can see from the chart, it was trending down. I think it was like a $3 card, but you could buy multiples of them for $2, $2.50. This was an obvious pick for five color dragons, especially since the dragons are big baddies and very difficult to cast from what we've seen so far. If I had that information, I would not spoil it. Why? To get some pennies from YouTube, I would buy this card out. But I would buy it slowly and then work my way to it. All right, talking about reprints, reprints, reprints. Um, this is an interesting card. It is the only tutor that was not reprinted. We have Vampiric Tutor, we had Burning Wiss, uh, we had Gamble even, was that's kind of like a tutor, I guess. And Mystic Tutor, Enlightened Tutor. Am I missing any tutors? One drop. Okay, I, I think that's all of them. Red has Gamble. Red's version is Gamble. But Green did not get its tutor reprinted. Therefore, it is a steady rise in cards. And this could be one of the explanations why no cards are valuable today. Is because all cards, cards are reprinted, which is good. I support reprinting. I think there's some confusing confusion of what my actual belief is. I support reprints and I support cheaper cards, 
but that does not mean I want to be holding on to 20 RTR sealed boxes, right? I would just get a place of what I need and that's it. That's why I suggest doing. If it's unclear, that is what I'm suggesting doing. I'm not suggesting we shouldn't play magic and we shouldn't buy cards in our maquette. I'm suggesting we buy singles. But we don't go in the old ways, or at least for me, where I would be like, all right, $5,000 for uh, a few cases of uh, RTR, let's do it. I mean, I have a video where we literally buy $5,000 of RTR. I mean, we opened a lot of it, we sold a lot of it, we got some value back, but at the end of the day, enjoy magic. Magic is a very, it's less expensive now to play, which means that more people can afford it, which is good. But that does not mean you should go out and buy 20 boxes of RTR or 20 boxes of Magic Origins or, God forbid, 20 boxes of Amaket and then hope one day that these 20 boxes will become, it will double your price margins. It's just not going to happen. Or if it is going to happen, the timetable has changed. It's not like original Zendikar. It's not like even Innistrad, which is a recent set. That is a relatively recent set. It's not like any of those. Everything's like RTR now, where it looks okay, but you really don't want to be holding, you don't want to be stuffing these in your closet and hoping that eventually you can make more money. You just want enough play sets of these cards and then buy them when they're reprinted, get them on the cheap, and now you can play Magic. That's it. You can play Magic now. Anyway, that's it, guys. Leave me a comment below. Bye.